and it's called the genie of the butter dish. The kitchen was strewn with newspaper, bubble wrap and boxes. On the worktop lay several rolls of parcel tape and a black permanent marker pen. Kate bent down to reach into the back of the cupboard under the sink and found a glass box. She straightened up and saw it was a butter dish. The lid bore the relief of a cow just so there was no doubt as to its function. She gave it an automatic wipe with a duster and suddenly there was a flash of light and a deep rumbling slightly foreign sounding voice boomed out. Thank you for calling Intergenie. Please hold. Your wish is important to us and we will connect you to the next available Intergenie representative. Please note that your wishes may be recorded for training purposes. <laughs> there then followed ten minutes of music, Vivaldi's Four Seasons, interspersed with a reminder every thirty seconds. Please continue to hold. Your wish is important to us and will be dealt with as soon as a representative becomes available. You can rely on the Intergenie. Kate continued to wrap and pack some glasses until she heard a new voice. Thank you for calling in the genie. This is Vijay speaking. What would you like for your first wish? Hey, eh? uh, You have rubbed one of our registered lamps and awakened the genie program to deliver three wishes. Lamp? Lamp? What are you talking about? <laughs> Let me check. Your signal came from unit number 2345654, which is... Ta -ta 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 -ta. Oh, yes. That unit has been reassigned. It is now a glass butter dish. <laughs> I expect it was the cuts. A lot of the more valuable lamps were sold on eBay. Some of the others have to be disposed of as they contain toxic metals which are currently banned under cost regulations. <laughs> what, are, are you saying even the world of magic and mystery is feeling the pinch? In the Genie is the leading provider of contract, wish, contract genie services committed to facilitating and enhancing your wishing experience whilst maintaining a cost-effective service and logistics structure to the key wish provider consortiums. So, so that means we've been outsourced to a call centre in Jaipur. <laughs> oh, okay, and I have to choose my wishes now. Can I, can I wish for anything? You can, provided that your wishes don't contravene the IGC code of conduct. We are full members of that august body and cannot offer, cannot offer anything that might put our five-star rating in jeopardy. We cannot, for example, grant wishes that could be of a political nature or that could be construed as any kind of contravention of the Human Being Human Rights Act, European Human Rights Act. <laughs> the United Nations Charter on Children, European Union Directives, or the Rules of Monopoly. <laughs> Monopoly? Oh, sorry, I was a bit of call centre humour. Uh, <laughs> IGC, uh, International Genie Convention. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like some help with this packing. We move in two days and I'm not even halfway through it yet. Well, there's no problem, your help is at hand. There was a tap at the front door. Through the glass, she could see two shadowy figures shuffling around in the porch. She opened the door. Yes? Hello, Mrs. We're Dazzle and Jordan. We're currently doing community service, and we've been assigned to you. Oh. We've been told to mention VJ at Intergenie. We get subbed out to some of these old companies, all to do with the cuts. Oh, you better come in, then. She stood back as they stepped inside. Dazza stopped and punched Jordan on the arm. Oi, bunhead shoes! They both crouched and pulled off expensive looking trainers the size of coal barges. They carried them through to the kitchen and placed them on the floor. Then they set about packing glasses and crockery into boxes, carefully wrapped in bubble wrap, taped down, labelled and stacked. In a couple of hours the kitchen was packed, as was the sitting room and the study. The lads turned to leave. We'll come back tomorrow and finish off if you like. Well, that would be lovely and thank you for your hard work and for respecting my carpet. Huh? <laughs> Taking your shoes off? Oh, no, it's just, it's really minging to get carpet fibres in your treads. <laughs> <laughs> the boys left and Kate went back to the kitchen. There was a beeping sound coming from one of the boxes and worrying that the kitchen timer was going to beep for the next two or three days, she set about locating it and taking out the batteries. She found the box, neatly labelled Kitchen Electric Accessories 2, and peeled, peeled back the tape. The timer was there, the Ziploc bag, the battery's instruction leaflet taped to it. It wasn't bleeping. The next block down the stack was labelled Kitchen, Ceramic and Glass Tableware, 3. The beeping was definitely coming from within. She retaped the first box and opened the second. On the top, carefully wrapped and taped in bubble wrap, was the butter dish. She lifted the lid. Hello, this is Karim. I hope you enjoyed your wish. Can I get you to, to, to complete a customer satisfaction survey? <laughs> it won't take more than a couple of minutes. Oh, OK. Oh, thank you. Uh, firstly, did the boys arrive together? Yes. Did they steal anything? No. <laughs> Were they polite? Yes. Or on a scale of 1 to 10, 
where one represents complete dissatisfaction and ten represents absolute delight. Please tell me how satisfied you were with the work they did. Twenty-five. Oh, I'm sorry, I can only record a number between one and ten. <laughs> oh, okay. The floor next to the box that had been packed in. She heard a faint noise outside and started as a distant rumbling, then became a rattle. <laughs> Amidst it all was the sound of a trumpet. She looked outside. Coming up the close was a large column of horsemen dressed in dark blue uniforms, some carrying lances with small pennants on them. Behind was a wagon train. They wheeled to a halt on the front lawn. The one at the front of the column dismounted and walked up to the door. He swept off his hat, revealing long golden curly hair. Lieutenant Hiram B. Warbecker at your service, ma'am. I don't believe it, she gasped. Are you here to help me move house? Your wish, according to my contract with Intergenie, is my command. I've been let down by the removal men. They can't come till Friday. Removal men? You want some guy taken out? No, no, it's tempting. No, I need to get my furniture shifted to our new house. The lieutenant turned to his men. Bring the wagons up and form them into a circle. We got some shifting to do. There were cries of yee-haw and similar expressions of exuberance. <laughs> we, we ain't had much call for our service since we put the redskins down. We was glad to find the work. The smart and disciplined men soon formed a human chain and had the house emptied in little more time than it took to describe it. So where are we taking this stuff then? Kate pulled out the map and pointed out the road to Swanage. Looks okay ma'am, are there any engines on the way? Kate thought about it. She thought it best not to mention the Balti house in Wareham, there might be a scene. <laughs> soon the column was mounted and ready to leave. They caused havoc on the Blandford Road passing through Hanworthy. Traffic was backed up for over a mile as the column struggled up the hill. Things got a little better when they turned west onto the A35 dual carriageway and headed towards the Baker's Arms roundabout. The queue of caravans, lorries and cars streamed past. Kate stayed behind. The horses had left a lot of mess and she wasn't going to let the buyers think she didn't keep a hand clean, clean house and garden. Eventually she was satisfied and got into the waiting car. Soon the noise of the column of horsemen could be heard clip-clopping down the lane, the hoofbeats and shouts echoing off the high stone walls. Wagons ho! The horses were picketed on the beach, much to the consternation of the council dog warden, who approached the sergeant to remonstrate with him and experienced a few nasty moments staring down the rude end of a cult peacemaker. The troopers formed up and marched a few yards to the new house, where they repeated their earlier performance in reverse. As each wagon was emptied, it drew away to join the horses on the beach. Within an hour, all the furniture and boxes were safely installed in the new house and Kate gratefully sank onto her new sofa. Down on the beach, however, things were starting to go from bad to worse. The troopers had been taking advantage of the all-day opening pubs. Horses were galloping through the surf, off urged on by bottle-wielding troopers who were whooping and hollering. The ice cream stall was turned over and the situation deteriorated into a riot. The Punch and Judy man cowered in his booth, having swallowed his swassle. The mayor was frantically phoning anyone he could get through to. He tried the police station, but apparently the Swanage Constabulary was having the day off. I eventually, he got through to the officer commanding Royal Tank Regiment, a few miles up the road at Bovington Camp, who in turn called his opposite number at the Royal Marines SBS depot at Hamworthy. Kate realised that something was amiss and suspected the cavalry were at the bottom of it. She started to search furiously for the butter dish. It was on top of the eleventh box she opened. She grabbed it and rubbed it vigorously. Thank you for calling in to Jeannie. Your wish is held in a queue and we ask it as soon as the wish granted becomes available. Your wish is important to us. Please hold. Please be aware that our wish may be recorded but for training purposes. Please hold. Oh, hello, through you. Through to Sanji. How may I help you today? Hello, hello. Can you help? Oh, hell's breaking this here. I need to get rid of these drunken soldiers. There's a riot on the beach. Oh, no, don't worry. We'll send them straight away. There was an embarrassing interview in the mayor's office. But I tell you, there was all hell going on. There were hundreds of them. Horses, wagons, guns, as he was whooping and hollering. It's true, I tell you. Why won't you believe me? His worship's state of nerves was apparent in the valentine-shaped patch of sweat on the back of his pure wool jacket. It took the combined strength of the policies and resources and cemeteries committees to restrain him. Later, a private ambulance arrived and his worship was led away dressed in a rather fetching jacket that tied up at the back. <laughs> Kate was preparing sandwiches. She unwrapped a half-pound block of Kerrygold and dumped it into an, in a, an innocuous-looking glass butter dish with a picture of a cow on, on the lid in relief. She placed the lid on, gave the outside a wipe with a cloth and put it in the fridge. Just another sunny summer evening in a sleepy seaside town. Thank you. <laughs>